So, what constitutes a seclusion room? And is there a difference between a seclusion room, a safe room, and an isolation room? Well, Education Minister Hekia Parata thinks, yes, there is. She says the room at Ruru Specialist School was not the same as the room being used at Miramar Central. When I got the, uh, I was advised about the complaint at the end of uh, 2014, it was a complaint to be investigated. The independent investigator investigated it. During the course of her report, she uh, made it clear that um, the room was not locked, even though it was called a safe room. She identified that there was a dearth of knowledge and consistency in the way that the sector was using terms and practices. And she recommended that guidelines be established using a wide cross-sector group. She also so identified it as dark and grimy, the size of a storage room and a really unpleasant place to be. And her report from February 2015, so what's that, 19, 20, 21 months ago, contains a log of all the times it was used. Now, if it was benign, if it was a safe room, why were they logging the usage? I'm not saying it was acceptable, um, nor do I agree that the practice should have occurred. But what I'm explaining is that the term and the definition of seclusion room has been inconsistently applied in the sector for quite some time. So when you say you didn't know about the use of seclusion rooms, what you're doing surely is resorting to semantics. No, I'm not, because that is the reason why we've needed an advisory group to establish consistency across the entire sector, because they have been using these terms interchangeably, and the practice has been different uh, between schools. Absolutely, Minister, but a rose by any other name. Look, I can see how you can make this argument, but with all due respect, and thank you for fronting, I'm not persuaded by it. This was a seclusion room, even if it wasn't called that. When and the it parents was when the parents then. wrote to you in May 2015, so what's that, 16 months ago, they called it a seclusion room. You replied to them personally, which was a very decent thing to do the following month. It was a seclusion room. You knew it was there. And so we found that that was unacceptable and we took the recommendation that an advisory group should be established to develop guidelines. So we took action on that complaint after it had been investigated. The advisory group has subsequently met, they have developed guidelines, and as they were coming to the end of that process, the second incidence with the Miramar Central School um, became known. I was advised there had been a complaint, I was advised that another independent review had been commissioned, and I got that report in mid-October. Since then, I commissioned the Ministry to find out what was the scale of the usage of this practice across schools. I secondly asked what was its status in law, and based on that advice, firstly, I understand that it is not a widespread practice. Very, very few schools are using this. But in that process, we also similarly discovered again that schools are calling different things by different names. Right, and we but need even to if you change that. the name, they are seclusion rooms. Look, I'm well, staggered. No, no, no. I, I want to make this point because... You knew, you knew, because, didn't you? You knew that there was I a knew. room at the Ruru School that was being used in this manner. The Ministry of Education knew there had been an inquiry. The parents wrote to you. You kindly replied to them. That was not this year, not the middle of this year, but early through to middle last year. Yes, and we took action, which included telling Ruru to stop that practice. Stop the practice of using a seclusion room, Minister. Well, stop the practice of uh, putting a child into those kinds of premises and uh, for whatever duration or whatever time. My point is, we took action on that investigation in terms of the recommendations made by the inter independent reviewer. Except, we took action except seclusion on that. rooms, as we know from Miramar and other schools that have yet to be identified, were still being used until very, very recently. And you so know, the, uh, I'm, look, I'm, look, just, people, people just turned their backs on this practice, didn't they? I mean, people, and now it's, 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 it's had daylight. Everyone is saying, no good, it has to stop. 
uh, a qualified mea culpa, yes, we need to intervene and end this. But in fact, the ministry has known about it. Your office has known about it. A lot of people have known about this for the best part of two years. So if I could say again, the complaint was made, an investigation was done to establish the facts, recommendations were made, and we acted on the recommendations. That meant establishing guidelines to make it very clear to schools what was the behaviour management that would be acceptable. While that was occurring, a second incident came to our attention. Again, I took action, which was to establish how widespread this practice was, what was its status in law, and how would we provide schools with advice and support so that this practice will stop. And once the law is passed, so that it is illegal. So in both cases, okay. both the Ministry and I took action that was relative to the complaint at the time. Now, now Minister, now what, know... what you've done since Miramar and what's happened since Miramar is an example of how quickly things can change when you get behind it, when public opinion gets behind it, when the ministry gets behind it, but none of that happened after Rudu. And no, Miramar, I don't agree with Miramar, you. I don't agree well, with well, you, well, John. Well, wait a because... sec. Let's, okay, now hold on a sec. Let's just state fact. Did Miramar happen after Ruru? Yes, it did. Yes. So that's a statement of fact. So had you acted this impressively after Ruru, Miramar wouldn't have happened. We would not be having this discussion now. There would have been no use of seclusion rooms since the beginning of 2015. John, we acted. You're disagreeing whether that action was satisfactory in your view. We acted with the Ruru investigation. We acted to say it is an unacceptable practice and you must stop. We acted on the recommendations of the independent reviewer, which was to convene an advisory group across the sector of practitioners, including police, child, youth and family, high and complex mental um, health needs. And they have been working on the development of guidelines, uh, taking in all of the research and evidence that they, as the operators in this sector, felt was necessary in order to compile a useful, practical set of guidelines. Those guidelines are now available. Then we had a second complaint, which also was investigated to establish the facts. And on the basis of that, a survey of how widespread is this practice because when we had Rudu, we had that one complaint and there are many complaints that come into the ministry weekly and we try through natural justice to investigate them to establish the facts. Minister, you had, Having... the, one, you had the one complaint from parents and, and that's absolutely true and, and, and once again you're stating fact but it's fact in a vacuum. You have Terry Johnston's report from February 2015 that lists student A, student B, student E, student C, student E again. There were lots of kids in the seclusion room. The fact of the matter is only one set of parents uh, went directly to the ministry and in fact to you. But this practice was being used often in some schools and it didn't stop until now. It should have stopped almost two years ago, right? Well, it is certainly an absolutely outmoded um, response to behaviour and it is something that had been made clear to the sector in the early 2000s. This particular case with Thrudu made it clear that the practice was still occurring and that's why the Independent Commission was uh, put in place to review it. We took action on her advice to the full extent of her advice and we resolved that the guidelines would be useful for the sector. What do you say to the parents at Thrudu School who first blew the whistle on this in December 2014, who went to you in uh, May 2015, who have tried desperately to get an investigation up despite the fact that the teachers have refused to talk to the police, who made formal complaints, uh, got a ministry investigation which was not referred to in the Aero report and are wondering almost two years on why they have been ignored so singularly, so comprehensively for so long. They haven't been ignored. Um, the investigation was commissioned um, when we got the complaint in December 2014. The Ministry acted on that investigation and the practice was stopped. 
Eke Parata, Minister of Education, talking to us earlier this afternoon. And in the past hour since we did that interview, we've obtained a copy of a letter written to the Turnbulls by the Ministry of Education's Deputy Secretary Katrina Casey, formally referring to the room at Ruru School as a purpose-built seclusion room. We will forward that letter to the Minister's office.